My brother in Christ. My brother in Christ. Oh, so you have one wire. Shit. All four are like on a dot. That's like you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh my the, god, that's funny. The, So do you want to win this exact AR-15? Watch today's video and find out how. SPR or Special Purpose Rifle is a term typically associated with the Navy's Mark 12, a designated marksman rifle developed for special forces. The SPR, it's a modified M16 or AR-15 offered as a solution for giving operators a rifle with a little bit longer range than your standard. 14 and a half inch barrel M4, but without being as big as like a large chassis 308 rifle or AR-10, like a longer version of the recon rifle, but geared towards precision and accuracy. It was used heavily in Afghanistan before being eventually phased out a few years ago. The Mark 12 SPR was issued in several variants or mods, all of them using a fixed A1 or A2 buttstock. They used a two-stage Knight's Armament trigger, an 18-inch Douglas stainless match barrel, and some of them had PRI carbon fiber free float handguards. Some of them had Knight's Armament free floating handguards. I've got a Mark 12 clone correct and complete upper, which set me back 1800 bucks. I love it, but I haven't shot it yet. I'm saving that for a video with you. I mean, as cool as they are, a Mark 12 barrel and handguard alone are going to run you about a thousand bucks. Could be worth it though, because the Mark 12, it's a sub MOA gun known for being extremely accurate, especially with the right ammo, almost like an AR-15 meets a sniper rifle, but it is going to cost you. Now just hypothetically, theoretically, can you get the same type of accuracy from an AR-15 for less than a thousand dollars? I think it could be done, and if it can be done anywhere, I'm pretty sure it's in Lakewood, Washington. That's where Arrow's brand new 300,000 square foot facility is located. Arrow's got a reputation for possibly the best bang for the buck in the AR-15 market. I'm not sponsored by Arrow. They didn't give me any money for this or product or whatever. I just respect the brand. I respect the people that work there, like those guys a lot. So they invited me to tour their new facility, which I of course agreed to do, but I asked while I was there, if they could build a Mark 12 SPR type rifle that would deliver sub one inch groups at 100 yards for under $1,000. They took the challenge. Side note, Aero spent $1,100, but $1,100 MSRP. Even if you're a new customer at full MSRP, they give you 10% off. That knocks the price down to under 1,000. But if you shop sales, you could probably even get below $900 for this exact same build. So don't gash me up here over the $1,100 MSRP, you cheap bastards. Build details first, then we're going to talk about how it performed. Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV. We're here at Aero headquarters just outside of Tacoma, Washington. We just did a tour of the facility. Kirk, am I right here? Like, I mean, you guys turn out a massive volume of AR-15 parts which keeps the price down, but you guys don't skimp on like QC or, no, or no. manufacturing. Yeah, it's a big, big, big uh, focus on like efficiency and, do, and using that, you know, kind of the cutting edge of the technology to ensure that we're, you know, passing that value on to the end user. I approached you and I said, you know what, let's try to use a thousand dollar budget and let's build the best possible DMR minus accessories that we can build with Aero products. What do we have, Kirk? Yeah, so um, kind of approaching this, you know, you got to look at the use case of DMR. So, um, you know, right off the, the get-go, it was like barrels a big focus point. 18-inch, 2-3 wild chamber, that's kind of a, an no-brainer. So we have the QPQ, 2-3 uh, wild barrel here. What, is, what does that mean for the audience out there? What, what is QPQ? I mean, that's a... Um, quench, polish, quench. It's a finishing technique. Um, so basically, that's what kind of gives it that, like, black, nitrite-ish mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just a finishing finishing technique. Um, the reason those are really nice over like a chrome lining, for example, um, is because you're not actually adding material to the inside of the bore. Um, so you're actually like, hypothetically getting a more precise chrome lining where yeah. you're taking a bore and you're like filling it with, with chrome. This yeah. is a non-additive process. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, for precision barrels, that's generally the way to do it. Um, some people do chrome lining pretty well, I think, but, um, you know, how we approach it, you know, we don't want to add any material in that barrel to keep that. Um, those dimensions as tight as possible. And this is our big spend here, right? Yeah, is, is yeah. Is this our biggest item? What are we looking at? Uh, so 220 for the barrel. Um, as a singular item, yeah, that's going to be the biggest spend. Uh, Woo! So Woo! 220 for the barrel. And because it's a 223 wild chambering, that's that's kind of a confusing point for a lot mm -hmm. of people. 
Um, basically, you have your 556 five, barrel, which everyone knows you, know, you can do 556 five, or 223. 223 wild kind of pulls the tolerances in a little bit. Um, this is like I'm glancing over a lot, but sure, essentially yeah. pulls the tolerances in a little bit so you get a little bit better performance with both 556 five, and 223. Mm -hmm. so. 220 bucks. My nephews aren't getting any presents this year for Christmas. Next item, what do we got? For the lower, we did just our Gen 2 lower. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as nice as the M4E1, but you know, again, we're, if we're going into this like, hey, I need to do a DMR build and I need to you know, save where I can, um, the lower was an area you know, you can, we sacrificed for this. You're losing on like a little bit more of like a premium experience, but you're not gonna be like at a, a functional disadvantage necessarily. Right. This one, we did the, the rifle length gap, uh, buffer system with the, the A2 stock, like you said. Um, and then on this one, this is something that's kind of optional, but I think is a good value add if you're looking to kind of hone in on that precision aspect, uh, was doing a trigger upgrade. Um, triggers are super like intimidating if you're not sure what you're getting because they're expensive, especially when you're trying to do, again, you have like a budget you're trying to stay within. And a lot of people think like, oh, in order to get a really good trigger in my rifle, I have to go spend $300 on some super fancy two-stage. And that's not necessarily always the case. So this one, we did the Schmid two-stage nickel mm -hmm. boron trigger. Um, this guy comes in at $69.99. I run these triggers a lot if someone just wants to try a two-stage trigger and they're not sure and they want to get a good one to kind of have that good first impression. I think this is a, a great starting two-stage trigger. I, and I've got to say, all the ARs that I've tested over the years, it is critical for accuracy to use a good trigger. Yeah. Uh, to me, like the Schmid trigger is a, a yeah. great value at, you know, you're talking 70 bucks. You can install it yourself. Yeah. Like you don't need to send it off to a gunsmith. We took the uh, trigger weight measurements before this video started. Yeah. And uh, with the mil spec trigger we were looking at, I want to say it was a, a little over seven pounds. Yeah. And with the Schmid, we're down to, you've got that nice two stage yeah. and it's down to four and a half pounds. So yeah. for, I, I say for $70, that's the most bang for your buck that we're getting out of. Yeah, yeah, and you're not only getting the lower weight too; it's a crisper trigger, yeah. and it's more consistent. Exactly, so it's just, and it's really critical for for good accuracy. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's kind of like having you know you drive a car that's like not really responsive, and then you get like a sports car, and like, oh, this is so responsive. That's kind of what the trigger is doing. It's kind of honing in those controls. That's a great analogy yeah, because things. yeah, sure, like yeah. all things being equal, you have the same horsepower, same everything, yeah. same transmission, same everything else. But you know, like if, if you don't have as good steering, yeah, you go into a wall. You know? Exactly, yeah. and so yeah, I think I think that's a, a, yeah. a mandatory yeah. like a, a great upgrade for the money. The lower all the parts. To, to build the lower, what am I looking at? Yeah, so the lower, you're looking at 110. Um, you're the lower by itself. Well, stripped lower by itself. And you guys, I mean, you guys, frankly, you put those on sale a lot. Yeah, we so put those on sale yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. full price for that. Full, full yeah, price, full yeah, MSRP. Yeah. And like most of this stuff, you know, if you're shopping around and again, you're really like trying to stick to a budget, as long as you're um, patient, you know, you'll find stuff on sale and you can, you know, strip a lot of cost. Yeah, but out we're of talking stuff. full price Full, full MSRP, yeah. yeah. Um, your LPK, which is going to be your, all your small parts, your tri your mil spec trigger, which we did swap out, your grip, um, all that jazz. It's LPK lower parts kit. 60, Everything that went into the lower. Uh, Sixty-five bucks. Your buffer kit, which is the like the recoil system back here, uh, minus the stock, is forty-five dollars. So that's going to be your, your receiver extension, uh, buffer spring, buffer, and then the stock itself uh, is fifty bucks for the A2 fixed. Um, there's different options there too. If someone wants to upgrade like a PRS, they can, but that's going to drive that cost up on right. basically. So. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, kind of jumping up into the upper. Um, the lower outside of that's very, you yeah. know, got mil spec controls. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the upper, um, we kind of went a little more, you know, this was another area we, where we could focus on and kind of get a little bit more value out of, I, I believe. Um, so we have our M4 E1 enhanced upper receiver. Um, that was kind of the, what we wanted to house everything in. Um, and the reason we chose that is because the handguard mounting interface for that upper receiver very specifically, um, it actually mounts to the upper rather than the barrel mount. It gives you a little bit of added rigid rigidity. Um, for people that aren't familiar with that, but are maybe familiar with like a monolithic, it's kind of a hybrid between your traditional barrel nut style and a monolithic. Um, so you're getting less force imparted on that barrel nut and in turn your barrel. Um, using yeah, and what, what does that mean for me in terms of accuracy if, if I'm Joe Blow and I don't know? Yeah, so you're um, basically the less outside force. Consistency is what creates accuracy. So um, if you're, your handguard's not necessarily subject to a consistent force, you're laying it up against stuff, that type of stuff. The more rigidity, the more rigidity, yeah, yeah. yeah, the less force is going to get imparted in that barrel, and in turn, you're going to get more consistency out of your barrel. Right. So this is a free floated handguard. Free floated handguard. I can I can rest this on a barricade. I can rest yeah. it on a bag, whatever, and it's not going to cause my my barrel to to yeah. move. And then beyond that, rather than mounting to the barrel nut, um, there's actually an extra layer of insulation between your barrel um, by by it mounting to the upper receiver directly, rather than the barrel. So. But this, uh, the M4E1, this is a, an aero specialty product. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, kind of unique to us, I would say. Um, you know, we're one of, I think, the only people that do like a forged where the handguard's still removable, but the handguard still mounts directly to the upper. Right. Um, there's very few of us, I'll say that. Sure, um, sure. If I'm building a precision build, I almost always gravitate towards the, uh, the enhanced handguards, right. or the enhanced upper receivers. 
And for handguard, we went with? The enhanced handguard because it has to meet directly up to it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, these are really good. They're really rigid. Um, they're very easy to install too at home if you're doing the build yourself. Um, you don't need like time a barrel nut or anything. You just torque the barrel nut to spec, put the handguard on, tighten the eight screws down and you're, you're good to go off to the races. Got a really good rigid handguard um, with plenty of accessory mounting capabilities. Mm -hmm. so going into the upper, you know, you got your enhanced upper receiver. That's gonna be 175. Uh, bolt carrier group, we ended up just going with a chrome phosphate uh, bolt carrier group. People get, you know, Finish is an area where um, I think you're not going to like sacrifice too much in performance. Right. Sure, it's not as like slick. It might be a little harder to clean. Phosphate works great though. Right. Sure. Um, don't want to get too wrapped up in that. For so chrome phosphate bolt carrier group, you're looking at 145. Charging handle. We just did a mil spec again, trying to not, not add. Yeah, that I mean, no, like a mil spec, just standard charging handle. Yeah. I mean, for like a DMR, it isn't like you know you're racking the shit out of your charging handle a whole ton, especially if yeah. you're using this for like longer range. Yeah. So when you're running a, I will say when you're running a like a magnified optic that though, the like the ambi charging handles, the extended levers, those do help. That is nice. Yeah. Um, I like them for that. But you know, again, keeping the budget. Oh, we're keeping budget a budget. We're trying mind. to keep it we're at a thousand bucks. Just, here. just yeah, do yeah, the mil yeah. spec, twenty one dollars. Um, the handguard is going to be 170, 169.99 um, for the handguard, and then that's going to be the 15 inch. There are different links available for that. Um, muzzle device. Um, this one's set up with a suppressor right now, um, but like if you did like an A2 bird cage, it would be eight bucks, <laughs> and then a uh, a whopping three dollars and twenty nine cents for your crush washer, uh -huh. uh, gas system. You're talking. Uh, $29.99, uh, depends on the finish you get, but usually twenty to twenty nine ninety nine, and then. Um, and then 18 bucks for your gas tubes. So. Right. And so we did the math on that. Like we're a tick over a thousand dollars whenever we, yeah. we, I mean, what were we at? Uh, yeah. Uh, 1051 plus 70 bucks for the trigger, but you guys do like a 10% off yeah. discount if you're a new customer. Yeah. Plus like this is full price for everything. You yeah. guys frequently run yeah. sales. So this build, um, as we have it here, I mean, of course, less the suppressor and the bipod and the optic, but just the rifle itself we're looking at right about a thousand dollars after yeah. you know discount sales like whatever yeah and you're getting a, a good accurate rifle like we, we shot this and we were getting you know sub moa with it all of our barrels carry a sub moa guarantee um so you know you're getting you know pretty good performance i would say really good performance um you know for not not too much money you're not having to dump a ton of money on like a custom rig that's you're gonna run you you know three grand sure and so, uh, dude kirk we all trust you yeah. we all all of us trust you but we are going to trust but verify. After we finished the build, we took it to Arrow's state-of-the-art brand new range, laid it down at 100 yards from a bipod using a first-gen 1-10X to LPVO from Vortex. I wasn't really optimistic, not only because we built a budget gun, but because this optic wasn't really geared towards precision-style shooting. It had like a weird combat semi-circle, like Donut of Death reticle, but we gave it our best shot, and here's what happened. So first five shots with our budget $1,000 DMR. We just used like a 10X optic. It's got like a combat reticle on it. So it's not even a super precise reticle. And you're talking about MOA or sub MOA group. You can see these are one inch by one inch squares, three shots right on top of each other, and then like one on either side. So first five rounds out of our uh, budget DMR, pretty impressive. Kirk, the other half team caveman, knocked out a 0.9 MOA group. So we've got like a point inch, point 0.8 inch group, point 0.9 inch group, and our first two groups out of this gun. Again, really impressive performance for like a thousand dollar gun. Yeah, I yeah. think. We were using the fancy shit, to be honest. We just got three sub MOA groups, point 0.8, point 0.9, point 0.9, with a federal gold medal, which, you know, this is good stuff. So I would say mission accomplished with this sub $1,000 build. I'll try to remember to include links to all the parts for the exact build in the description so if you guys want to replicate this out there you can and get a hell of a shooting rifle for under a thousand dollars however as a total surprise to me and a thank you to you arrow announced that they're going to give away the exact rifle from this video i'm talking right there on the spot they told me like hey james we are going to give this gun away to one of your viewers i was totally surprised really cool of them to do it's early december that means you know we're in the holiday spirit yep. here at tfb tv and the guys at Arrow also yeah. very much Festivus guys, huge yeah. Festivus guys up here in Tacoma. 
So they're going to do a giveaway of this exact rifle, obviously less the accessories. We're talking just the rifle itself. So you can either go and buy it or one of you, and this will be in the description. We haven't figured out the particulars yet. We don't no. need to. We don't, we don't need, need to. to right now. We're just feeling jolly. We're just Dude, feeling jolly. Yeah, we're just feeling jolly. We can deal with the details later, yeah. but one of you will win this rifle, this exact rifle, for free. There's a link to their page to enter in the description. Only TFB TV subscribers are eligible. Make sure you're subscribed to TFB TV. If you win, we'll verify you're a sub. Arrow will send you the gun. Merry Christmas. That's it for today, but be sure to stick around for more awesome content from Arrow, including their new suppressors and a factory tour. Thanks everyone for watching and thank you to our sponsors, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore, and Ventura Munitions. See you guys. Yeah.